Hi everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron and I have here some leftover fibre reactive dye. Originally it was one gram of full flame and one gram of scarlet mixed together in an unspecified amount of liquid and I have that left over so rather than throwing it away I thought I would use it for another project. Right. Now I have here uh, five 20 gram skeins of Superwash Blue Face Leicester yarn. Uh, it has been soaking in water for quite a while and I'm going to try making a bit of a fade set with this. So put that in and then in maybe about five minutes time I'm going to add the next one and then the next one and the next one. Hopefully this will create a nice fade set. Okay, this has been in for five minutes and you can see that it's still very red and that is a beautiful, beautiful red. So I am going to add in the next 20 gram skein if I can. This is all tangled. I haven't um, put separate tags on these like I have done in the past so I know which one went in first. I'm hoping it will be obvious when I uh, come to, oh, this is so dangled. I hope, I'm hoping it'll be obvious when it comes to the finished product. There we go, the second one, oops. Try not to splash the dye all over my stove top. Yeah, there we go. Leave that for another five minutes and then I'll add the next skein. Okay, it's been another five minutes and you can see there's still lots of red in there. It's looking a bit more orange, I think. Looking at these two together, I can just about tell the difference, but I'm starting to wonder if I <laughs> will regret not labeling these. So here comes the third skein. Okay. I've had to move burners because I'm doing another dyeing project at the same time. That's why it's a slightly different angle. So adding this next one. It does look like this yeah, this dye is getting paler and I can tell the difference between those two. I think there might be a third one in there. The first two might be very similar, but I can certainly see a difference between that one, which I'm guessing is number three, and this mess, which is probably a mixture of one and two together. And see, this is a nice peach colour now. So there's not going to be much for the next, for the last skein. And it's time for the last one in there to go in there. This is looking very cramped now. And you can see there's barely any color in there. So I think this is gonna look really, really lovely. Uh, really hope I can tell the difference between the first two that went in. Yeah, that is pretty cramped. I think I'm gonna add a bit more water just so there's a bit of space for, for it to move around. I don't usually dye 100 grams in this pot because it is quite small. You can see my pot is very full now. So I am just going to cover this up and leave it for probably about half an hour. And that should give it enough time for the colour to set to the yarn. It's been about half an hour since I put the last skein in. And it looks like all the colour is in the yarn. This one here looks particularly patchy. It was just floating there on top, not really able to access all the dye. Uh, it looks like we might have a really nice fade set here. A bit patchy because it's all in quite cr a cramped um, saucepan. I wouldn't normally dye 100 grams in here. But all in all, I think it might be quite nice. So I'm just going to turn it off the heat now, let it cool down and then we can wash it. Okay, this has completely cooled down now and I was able to untangle this mess of, mess of yarn to be able to get a zip tie on here to hopefully keep them all a bit more ordered. That water is completely clear. Fantastic. So I'm just going to run this under some cold water. Be very careful of this long, loose bit of yarn there. Doesn't look like there's any runoff, which is good. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of washing up liquid 
Just get rid of that vinegar smell, get rid of anything we don't want on here, any unbound dye. But hopefully, there shouldn't be any more, any colour coming out. Nope, not that I can see, which is fantastic. That's always good when there is no bleeding. So I'm just going to rinse this through and then I can hang it up to dry as I am very happy with this. And hopefully I won't lose tailing down the plump puck hole. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, very happy with this one. And here is the finished yarn. Now I was able to tell the difference between the first two skeins here. They're very similar, but the one that was in first is a touch darker. I just love how deep this red is. It's I've tried to dye reds in the past and I don't always get it right and they end up being sort of more this shade, these shades, sort of a paler red fading into pink. But this is a really lovely red. I'm really, really happy with how red that red is, if that makes sense. If we have a look at the darkest and the lightest together, it's a lovely comparison between between them. I I wouldn't like to say how much of dye is in this and in, in, in that one, but you know, just from five minutes each, so that this one got an extra 20 minutes worth of dye than this one. That's sort of what I can, how I can judge it. And I'll definitely be doing this again with other colours, let me know uh, which colours you think I should do next. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Do please click like and subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video, uh, what colour should I do this experiment with next, uh, let me know. I publish a new dyeing tutorial every Monday, usually around about 6pm UK time and I like to try and do different things in my videos, so there should always be something different and interesting to watch. Thank you so much for watching.